Hello everyone. This is Marie from Marie's Scrappy Creations and today we are going to start sewing scraps. Yay! So I took some of the scraps out of my bucket, out of one of my buckets. I have so many scraps that you guys would not believe it. I have four or five pails full, multiple shopping bags that are tied as tightly as they can go and I believe two boxes full of scraps and they're all different sizes but what I did is I ironed my scraps to get them all ready because I do like to have them neat they're easier to work with that way you do not have to iron your scraps first but if they're all scrunched up they are hard to work with in my opinion so I've got what I would call crumbs here and then I have some these are bigger pieces to me, uh, perfectly usable, still a scrap, and I have strips. And there's quite a few different ways you can sew your scraps together, and that's what we're going to start with. We're going to start with all the different ways, or I guess some of the ways, that you can sew scraps together. Oops, can't forget triangles. <laughs> uh, I'm not crazy about sewing triangles together, but we have these pieces left over. I have all different sizes of triangles and some are rounded on the end and they're not all the same size, but they all work and we'll go over that as well. So I've made a lot of crumb blocks and uh, they make beautiful quilts. See, as you can see, they're not all squared off yet. That one isn't finished and they can be any size you want them to be. But the thing that I like best about crumb blocks or just scrappy projects in general is not only that you're using all of your fabric that you paid for, it's they're so colorful and bright. They're just, they make me happy to see all those colors together. And then besides the fact that you can think of what you used this fabric for to begin with. This was in a quilt I made for my oldest granddaughter. This was from a bag that I made for a friend. This was from a pot holder set. I could go on. There's memories in these blocks. Now, I also have large pieces because basically what you're doing is you're taking all your scrap pieces and you're making a piece of fabric out of it. And I want to have some bigger pieces such as this and I am challenging myself this year which is one of the big reasons I started this YouTube channel. I'm challenging myself to use as many of my scraps as I can in 2022 and I thought it would be great if all you guys joined me to see if we can get rid of our scraps. Now I touched on this in the first video but what happens if you don't have scraps? Well. You can cut up old clothing. I think we all have that. And I tend to stick to cotton. I use 100% cotton fabric. Uh, you might have some flannel shirts. Your husband might have a shirt he doesn't care for the print of or, or what have you. You can use any of that. Or you can buy yardage to make what we're going to make. Um, so... Today we're going to start with all the different piecing techniques that I know of to sew these scraps together. And what you're going to need, your scissors, and I use a little pair of snips that I keep near the sewing machine. I just find them to be quite handy. And you're going to want some straight pins, such as those. Any pins will do. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I stick myself in the run of a day, but, uh, well, we won't talk about that. And then some people like to use the Clover Clips. I guess Clover is the brand, but uh, they kind of work like a clothespin, and they clip on the side. I don't use them for uh, scrap piecing because they're, they weigh the fabric down, but some people might like to do that, so... Uh, if you're one of them, then that's fine. Uh, and you're going to need an iron and your sewing machine. So, 
if you want to meet me over at the sewing machine, we're going to start piecing our scraps. See you there. Okay, so here we are at the sewing machine. In our first video, I told you that I would explain what a leader and an ender are. Now, underneath where the needle goes down into this hole, a lot of times when you start your sewing, if your fabric, if you're starting right on the edge of your fabric, the needle will get will push the fabric down into that hole and it will get all wedged up. And to get around that, we use leaders and enders. So one leads, just like you would think at the very beginning, and one ends. As well as keeping your fabric out of that hole, they also serve another purpose where they, they help you save thread because you're not using as much thread as when you pull it out all the way. Okay, so we're going to start with strips. We're going to sew strips together. And there's two different things that we could do with our strips. So we'll start with the easiest way, which is just putting right sides facing, line them up, put them under the presser foot. And I'm using a quarter inch foot. You can use the edge of your presser foot. You could use three eighths of an inch, whatever you like to do. And I apologize, this machine is a little louder, although it sounds louder to you guys than it actually is uh, because of the way the camera is. So then when that's together, we take our next pieces and I'm not going in any particular order. I'm just grabbing two that are not the same fabrics. Put it under there and there we go. Next week, I'm going to start with a tutorial using all the pieces that we sewed together through the week. So if you're with me on this venture, you're going to want to sew some scraps together or just some fabric ready. Just have fabric ready. And you're going to need some of the cotton batting that I was talking about. Uh, last week, 100% cotton batting. You don't want a uh, cotton polyester blend because I'm going to direct you to use an iron as well as the product or the project that we're going to make is going to have to withstand heat because we're going to use it in the kitchen. Nope, it's not a pot holder. Oh, I didn't use my ender. Oops, my bad. Okay, so we've got some strips sewn together, like so. Now, if I weren't filming, I would bop over to the iron and I would iron these. But for now, I'm going to put right sides together. Gee, I've got green, brown, green, brown, green, brown. You know what? Let's get another color in here. Let's put a nice bright yellow in there. We're going to do one more. I think you see where I'm going with this. The machine I wanted to use, which is my newer machine, just is so temperamental. And I have about had it with it. It's... Uh, not even two years old and I have a lot of problems with thread. It will tell me that the upper thread isn't threaded right. It gives me all kinds of error messages and I've done it over and over. The problem is it's very particular about the brands of threads you use and I just have way too many to deal with that. I like to put in a, a spool of thread, put in a bobbin and have it work. Okay. I'll use this as an ender. And here again, we're just going to sew it up. That will be our leader for the next piece. Okay. 
So we're going to cut the excess off here. And that will go right back into our scrap pile. I don't want to lose that. Okay. So as you can see, we're making a long line of fabric. So I'll sew these together. We had a beautiful day here in Maine today. It actually got to be 33 degrees, which may be chilly for you, but it was like a heat wave here. Uh, we'll take it. We Last month, we were 35 below zero. Well, old habits die hard. I, I'm not using my leader and ender like I wanted to show you. I do when I'm not talking or thinking about something else. But. And we'll straighten all this up when when we're not uh, doing 40 other things, yeah. Okay, how about a blue? A blue would look nice. And I, as I told you earlier, I prepped all these pieces with the iron earlier today to get them ready for the video. Okay, so this is the last strip that we're going to do for the scrap strip because I'm sure you can tell what we're doing. That's all we're doing is sewing scraps like this together, scrap strips together. And then we could turn these into any number of projects, and we will in the coming weeks. So normally I would go iron that flat. And when I say iron, I guess I should say press, because when we think of ironing, we think of moving that iron back and forth and just really pressing hard. You do not need to do that. And in fact, if you do that, when you're working with fabric, you can stretch it out of shape. And that wouldn't be good because your seam allowance can change and it's just not good at all. Okay, I'm going to show you what else we can do with a strip as far as scraps go. Okay, so let's take one of our strips and then remember the crumbs I showed you earlier. We've got little pieces of different different sizes here and I'm just going to pick one. And I'm going to lay it across there. I'm going to pick another one. I'm going to lay it this way. Let's see if I can find a little one here. I'll cut one just to go right on the end. And you can pin these if you want. I generally don't pin at this stage, although I will pretty soon. When they start getting a little bit bigger, I do pin. So you want to see what you've got here. This is another way of just putting your, your crumbs together to make a bigger pieces like the squares I showed you earlier. This is the method I used a lot. Um, there's a time and a place for me to sew the strips together. And I'm going to take another one and I will put the other piece of yellow there. Let's see what we've got. How about a beige? Oh, we'll make some more room. We'll set it that way. Ah, little snip of green. Green on green. Okay, so I think you see what I'm doing here. I lay the strip down and I put my little crumbs on top of it. Cut these apart and see what we have. I'm going to cut right in between them. Be fearless. You can't mess up a crumb. Cut in between. In between. So then you've got bigger sections. Like so. 
Now maybe, once we get a pile of these, maybe we want to start putting them together. And of course, I don't have a lot here, not a lot of color variations, I should say. But you would match up length for length. So let's see. Oh, that would go right there. Now, normally I would iron this, but I'm not going to stop to iron right now. I normally press mine open. Um, quilters are told to always uh, press to the dark side with their seams. I, I'm not a rule follower. <laughs> I press mine open. I think they lay flatter that way. Okay. So as you can see, we have a section. Now when we look at this block, oh, look, some of the same fabric. When you look at this block, you can see all the individual pieces and how I did it. So once this section was done, then I hooked it here because I can tell by that line. But once you got that into a zippered bag, a tote bag, a quilt, whatever you were making with it, you would never know where you, where you pieced it together or how it came about okay now i told you i'd tell you what to do with triangles my least favorite thing to work with honestly so you're just going to take the flat sides what you're going to do later after they're sewn is you're going to square that off with your ruler or your scissors you're just going to lay them right sides together along the longest part And so just like we did the other ones. Just like this. And I always chain piece because it saves thread, it saves time. Let's get some flat pieces here. Close enough on that one. I'll cut the extra off and that will be another scrap piece. When you're working with triangle, you're working with the bias of the fabric. In fact, with a lot of the scraps, you're working with the bias, which is the crossways grain of the fabric because it's woven up and down and back and forth. So if you're going diagonal, you're going across the bias, which is the stretchiest part. And usually with the, the triangles, that's what you're getting is, is a lot of the stretch so you don't want to pull it underneath your machine so anyway when i get in the mood to sew crumbs i just sit here and i put two pieces together just like this and i just chain these and i'll grab two more and the only thing i do is make sure that they're similar on one side or the other i'm usually a little more particular but here again an example i'll just show you I'll get quite a pile going back here and when I've got like a mountain of them I stand up and take them over to the ironing board okay so let's do some of these strip pieces again where we're putting the crumbs on the strips to me that makes the most interesting ones and you can do them in long sections so I the other thing is I don't generally um, add a triangle onto these because then I have to cut other pieces. It just doesn't work out well in my opinion. Oh, another piece. And then there's another way to put them together that's called crazy quilting. Uh, my great grandmother made a lot of quilts. They were crazy quilts. And I sat underneath her sewing machine. She had a, an old fashioned treadle machine and she would keep a paper bag at her side by, down by her feet and it would be full of scraps. 
and so when I was there one time, I was probably about seven, and I would try to see what she had. Like if she had a red, I'd try to find something that would match really well in the bag. And she told me not to do that. She said as long as it wasn't the same fabric, the same print, it was going to be beautiful and not to worry. And that has that has served me well because you can't just worry about what's going to match with what and it all comes out because I showed you the blocks that I have made up. There's nothing wrong with those. There might be a, a kid's print next to a wildlife print, something like that, but that's okay. It, it's fine. It's all working out fine. Mm, look at that little piece. I can put it this way. This type of sewing to me gets very addictive. I can sit here for hours and do this and I, I have the blocks to prove it. Uh, generally what I do though is I make a whole mountain of these before I get up and then I take them over to the iron and I press them before I put my subsets together like I did here. And I like to keep everything together. So what we're going to do is, I think I'm going to check in with you on Wednesday. I think I'm going to do twice a week for a little while. And I think on Wednesdays, I'm going to call it What's Up Wednesdays. And I am going to show you what I'm working on so that uh, you can be inspired. It might not necessarily be what the tutorial will be for Saturday, but it will give you just a glimpse into what I've been working on. So next week, uh, I'm going to make something with the scraps that I started sewing together. I'm going to make something probably with this piece. Now, you could sew a great big piece with crumbs, put it together. Uh, I'm going to work on this until it measures approximately 14 inches by 16 inches. And I'm going to need something for the back of this project that is the same size. So you can either use a piece of fabric that you have that are those sizes, or you can put some of your scraps together to make a 14 by 16 inch rectangle. And again, you're going to need your cotton batting because this is going to be something that will have to take the heat. Now, uh, I was working on some Valentine's Day projects the other day and I recorded a, just a little over 20 minutes worth of video. And if you stick around after this, I'm going to put that on there and basically there's there's not a tutorial to it it's I kind of explain what I'm doing uh, and you get to see a little bit of the project and uh, if you find that interesting just stick around and that will play after this and I will pop into YouTube on Wednesday and let you see what I'm up to and the tutor next tutorial will be on Saturday of next week. So I see you then and thank you for hanging out with me and remember to subscribe and hit the bell so that you'll get a notification when I upload a new video. The more subscribers I get, the better it is for one reason. I'll be able to do live videos when I get to 1,000 subscribers, which will be fun because then we can hang out in real time and you can ask questions or give feedback in real time and that's going to be fun. So until then, uh, take care and I'll see you Wednesday and hang around to see what I did this week. Bye-bye. Okay, I thought that while I was sewing, I could show you guys what I'm working on. So, here we go. I am making some fabric postcards, kind of a gift, last minute, though it may be. It's the thought that counts, right? I'll never get everyone that I should, but that's what I'm doing. 
All right, so I hope you can see. I'm still working on camera level angles and all that. And uh, I just wanted to show you guys what I'm working on this week. Then when we do our tutorial on Saturday, I thought maybe I could stick a video at the end of each tutorial showing what I've been working on. Now these are going to be fabric postcards. There's just cotton batting on one side that I've sewn strips of fabric to. So what I did yesterday was I got into one of my uh, bits of uh, <laughs> my pails of scraps and I pulled out anything that was pink, red, or what have you that looked anything like Valentine's Day. And I am just running with it. And I've got to get them in the mail because my land today is the 9th. So there's only five days until Valentine's Day. So but I thought maybe you guys would like to watch me work on this. I can't say as it will be exciting. But maybe it will be. And I am making these with a person in mind for each one. I wish I would have thought of this before I did so that I could have made more. I also ordered some more paper today because I have, a, what do they call it, cardstock. But I guess it's like a, a regular cardstock and not heavy duty because I'm finding that when I made my first few fabric postcards, using what I thought was going to be just fine. It's actually feels very thin. So for these ones, before I mail them, I'm going to put two layers. And I've seen quite a few YouTubers making the fabric press cards. And of course I have to put my own spin on everything, as anyone should. You can't just look at what someone else does and copy it. Well, I, I guess you could. <laughs> But I always like to put my own style or flair onto everything because, you know, we all get different ideas and we have different ways that we like things and no two people are alike, they say. So, and that will be true with anything that I show you. Uh, definitely, you can take what I say, take some of it, throw the rest out, keep what you want, however that saying goes. And also, I wanted to mention, if you don't like videos that are that have a lot of talking in them, you're probably not going to like my videos because one of the main reasons that I'm doing this channel is I thought, you know, it's so nice. We've been through this pandemic and we haven't really been visiting people as much as we used to. And I thought... What a great way to visit with friends, to actually sit down and sew with them. So I thought, well, maybe if people felt like they were right here with me, sewing, as friends would get together and do projects, then I thought maybe I'd have something there. So if, if you definitely want to try this out, I hope that you're going to stick with me here. And I hope that I come up with some great content. But I have a lot of ideas for things such as these. So there's number one. I might add something else to it. I'm not sure. But that's what I've got right now. Okay, number two. Now this one, so far, is my favorite. This little piece of fabric is the only piece of fabric I have left from the quilt that I made for my oldest granddaughter. So I bet you can guess whose postcard this is going to be. And I did start this last night, but I added some more elements to it. So I thought I better come back and stitch them down. Um, so everything that you see on these is a scrap. I have lace that a friend of mine gave me. She's terrific. She's always going to secondhand stores and then she'll drop by and she'll bring me bags of rickrack and all sorts of things. And she's an artist as well. Um, 
you know we all we all like all these different things uh her and her best friend make miniatures like they take little tiny things that we might throw away and they make these little boxes that open up i don't know how else to describe it and it looks like a living room and a kitchen and all the little things in the house are things that are normal everyday items that we would throw away but they fashion them to look like refrigerators or couches or or whatever you want to have there and and i really like it i really like their stuff and then i have someone too that i'm going to showcase i received a gift a few months ago now and it surprised me because it came out of no i wasn't expecting it at all and i have a friend whose sister has started making items and i don't really know how to describe them she takes things that people might toss like for me, she used a wooden thread, a spool of thread, no more thread on it, but it had at one point. And she used a watch strap and all kinds of things. And I will show you guys what I am talking about. Uh, not in this video, but in another one. And she makes them, once she knows the person, she makes them something based on what she has available. <clears throat> And it's incredible. I, I cannot get over how some people are so artistic. And I can't draw. Like, I can't draw. I have a neighbor and friend who, she's incredibly talented with, you know, paint, markers, whatever. Actually, I have quite a few friends who can draw and paint, and I I can't do a stick person. I, I seriously can't. It would just be a joke if I tried to, if I tried to draw or paint anything just like I can't sing my granddaughter always wants me to sing my youngest granddaughter and I always tell her no you don't want to hear Mimi sing really darling you don't um, but to her music is everything and she loves it. see I told you I was kind of chatter didn't I so these are exactly what you think like I said these are fabric postcards and I've been having a ball making them I have a few YouTubers who I've seen make them, and as I said, everybody has their own style. Um, I might be able to drop some links here. And on the video that I do postcards in, I will definitely drop the links to the YouTubers that I follow that have made them. And what I did is I just picked up this hint from this one and that hint from another and then threw in my own style. So what do you think of that one? I think that's pretty cute. Okay, number three. Oh, this one is for a friend of mine who sews. So I used a piece of the edge of fabric. Um, so it, it told what it was, but I, it was white and red, so I knew it would be perfect for hers. And I'm going to send this to her as a surprise. She has no idea that this is coming. Um, and that's what's best. Oh, there goes my iron beeping telling me it's been a while since I touched it. If I don't move it, it shuts off, and that's probably a good thing for me because I tend to forget it's even going over there. But. So what did you all do for Valentine's Day? Anything good? My husband and I, the day after Valentine's Day, it will be 31 years, yeah, 31 years since we met. And to celebrate that day actually even more so than we celebrate our wedding anniversary because it we feel it's the day that our lives change right okay this one didn't need a whole lot of sewing to finish it up although I think it needs something what do you think I think I don't know those words going down I, I wanted them to show so I didn't want to cover that up Okay, let's go on. Oh, this is another favorite. Lots of lace. What do you think of that one? Sweet, cutie. Makes me think of all those Valentines when I was a kid. I don't know how they do them now, but when I was young, and, and we'll just say early 70s is what I'm remembering 
Valentine's parties where the teachers would say you have to give one to everyone in the class because I guess it had been a thing where if you didn't like a certain boy or girl that sat next to you or whatever uh, that you didn't give them one which I couldn't imagine not giving one to everybody but I guess it happened but we would make little boxes and decorate them every year and I bet kids are still doing that to find out. I've got enough grandkids in school that I, I bet I could find out. Uh, but we would decorate the boxes and do the whole thing up. This lace is not flat like the other lace. And I'm really wondering if I should sew that down. I don't know. I kind of think it looks great like that. I'll backstitch a little bit and leave that like that. So the only one I've got an actual card for this year is my husband, as far as Valentine's card goes. And I was thinking today, I guess I could make him one like, like this. <laughs> it, it wouldn't hurt me to do it. Um, I'm not sure if he'd know what to do with it or not, because you know how men are. Um, they might like it, but what are they going to do with it once you give it to them? They don't know. I guess I wouldn't know either if I got one. But um, here again, one of the YouTubers I follow, she had a great idea. She said, you know, you could put that inside a picture frame. These fabric postcards, and you could keep them. That, that is a great idea. Absolutely. So that woman is Robin over at RS Island Crafts. And I found her channel by mistake oh, I don't know, three or four years ago. And I say by mistake because I was clicking on something else and clicked her link instead. And I probably would have found her anyway, but eventually. But anyway, what I find so funny about Robin and I is we're very close to the same age. She is younger than I am because, you know, I'm an old one. Uh, but I'll make something. Say I make a zippered bag. And I think, oh, wow, I love the way that turned out. Within a couple of weeks, she's making that zippered bag. And this has happened so many times that it's almost scary that we think so much alike on so many things. But, you know, she doesn't really know me, so I can't go, hey, Robin, I thought of that. I didn't want to keep saying, hey, I thought of that. And then one day she had a new sewing machine and she said, I brought, bought a brother, CS6000i, and I'm... I got it for a good price. I had just bought one. But I I don't think I commented on that video because I didn't want to appear creepy. But yeah, I've got one. And am I crazy about it? Mm, no, I'm working on it right now, actually. And it works great for things like this. But when I make my zippered bags, anything that's really thick, it does not want to sew through anything thick. It just doesn't want to go. And sometimes I use my walking foot, but that isn't always a guarantee that it's going to work either to go through. It just, it doesn't like thick stuff. Anybody going out to eat for Valentine's Day? Are people doing that these days with COVID stuff going out to dinner? What do you think? Do you think I should sew that down? Like I'm going to get an answer right now. I'm recording this and you won't even be watching it until they're in the mail. But, you know, audience participation and all. And if you're wondering why I don't just start sewing and I pull my thread up, I pull up my bottom thread because that way when you start sewing, it doesn't make a mess. A lot of times it will make a mess. So some people uh, start with a leader and an ender, which we'll go over on one of the videos. And leader and enders are just little tiny pieces of fabric that you have, a scrap. <laughs> and you put them underneath your presser foot to start sewing on so that... Because what happens is the needle will push the fabric down inside the little hole that's underneath there. And you, nobody wants that. That's, that's not fun. You don't want to pick your fabric out of, out of there and try to pull. And oh, it can be an awful mess. And you don't, nobody wants that. You just want it. So I tend to 
pull my bobbin fabric or bobbin thread up through and yeah it's kind of friggy and you have to take a minute to do it but you know it is what it is it's what we do so when I do Saturday's video which will actually be my first my first tutorial I'm going to be going over the different ways to sew fabric all the fabric scraps together and one of the ways is exactly how I made made these because I took a base piece and just took strips and put them together and I did kind of use a 45 or 60 degree angle on some and I, I could have laid them right up straight back and forth up and down whatever and totally up to you whichever way you want to do it whatever way tickles your fancy because this is what we're in it for we're in it for the creativity I want your creativity flow it's funny I have all these Valentine's done and I kept looking at my Halloween fabric and it's a Halloween fabric Murray why were you looking at Halloween fabric well one of my friends and neighbors she lives right actually right next door to me uh, she loves Halloween like she just loves Halloween and so yesterday when I was making these I thought well when I get through making the real pink and red hearts valentiney ones I am going to make one for her with some hearts and, and red and all that but I'm gonna put some valent or some Halloween features in it and you want to know what she posted this morning on social media she posted a, a short video of her drawing a pumpkin that had how uh, Valentine vibes so I'm thinking along the same line she is <laughs> And there again, I thought it was kind of funny. I don't, I mean, I'm not saying I'm psychic. I'm just saying some of this stuff is kind of odd when I think things and, and then someone either says something or does the exact same thing. So it is kind of funny. How that happens. Now this one isn't as decorated down here. I wanted to get the lace sewn on first, see what I have left because I have quite a few pieces of stuff that I prepped. I use a product called Heat and Bond Light, and I iron it onto the back of fabric. Like, this here says friends, hopefully. I don't know which way is right to you guys, but it says friends or cutie. This was baby fabric, and this was some Care Bears fabric, and I just cut it out, cut out a piece of pink out of my scraps, and... I iron the heat and bond onto the back of it and then cut it out to the shape I want it, pull the backing off, iron it onto the fabric, and, and now I'm stitching over it. Well, I'm stitching over lace, but you know what I mean, the words. And that's how you do that. I'll be showing that in an upcoming video. Uh, there are some things that you guys will have to have to, to make some of the projects, but I'll definitely let you know beforehand. And this is the last one that I've got to sew, and hopefully I've got enough to say to keep us through this video. Uh, but, so my husband was out shoveling this morning. Um, over the past week here we've had probably upwards of 12 to 14 inches of snow and it's beautiful out there absolutely beautiful and he doesn't mind shoveling so yes it's a lot of work and all that but he, he has it all neat out there he couldn't stand it if our walkway and driveway wasn't all neat so he shovels and keeps it all done up had a lot of snow too somewhere way more than what we've got here in Maine you know the other lace that was like this I didn't tack it down with the stitches but I think I'm gonna try it on this one just, just gonna push it down one look fine. I'll just stop doing it. Yeah, 
nothing wrong with the way that looks, huh? So, uh, I have some uh, clear envelopes that these go into, and you can affix a, uh, a little stick-on label so that it can go through the postal service. I do want to add buttons to a couple of these, and those ones will not go in the clear envelopes. They'll just go in a metal envelope. Because, um, you know, if you want to put anything on there that's thick, um, it, it's not going to go through the mail sorters that they use nowadays. And I don't even know if you can stamp it for, you know, to be hand sorted. I don't even know if you can do that anymore. When I was a kid, my, my cousin Judy and I used to send letters back and forth and we would make our own envelopes. And some of them were so extraordinary that we had to write on them hand sort because otherwise I guess it would have got caught up in the machinery. But that was uh, probably 1974, so I'm sure things have changed a little bit since then. But I do think someone said that you have to, uh, anything that has to be hand sorted just can't go. You've got to uh, package it for whatever, whether you put it in a, a bubble envelope or you have to do something so that it's safe in the postal machinery. We've got one more rectangle to sew around and that will be the end of this. And I would love to hear what you guys think. I have an idea to do these postcards coming up for we've got Easter because you know sometimes you send Easter cards so these postcards could be done for Easter as well so I'd get my spring scraps ready and maybe that would be something fun you'll have to let me know in the comments I also thought that a contest might be fun like maybe see who comments or everybody who's comment who comments gets their name put in the in the for the drawing and I could just give away something that I've made. Maybe it's a zippered bag, maybe it's something else, maybe we won't know what it is until the time. But that might be fun just to, to have a giveaway at the beginning. Because believe me, I have made a lot of stuff. A lot of items already made. I've got hanging towels and bags, tote bags, all kinds of bags. Okay, well that's it for this. I think I'm going to stick this on the end of this week's video just to see how I did because this is definitely a trial video. And hope you guys enjoyed the video and watching me do this.